Hello and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain and I'm your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven day a week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 171 of our trek and yesterday we finished exploring the five trails needed to get over yourself so that you can get on with your life. Today we will ask the question, are you affecting or infecting others that you impact? If you do miss any of the days of our Wisdom Trek episodes, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the daily journal. We are recording our podcast from our studios at home too in Charlotte, North Carolina. Our workload continues briskly, but we continue to trek on one step at a time. If we do not stop, I know that we will reach our destination. Now my voice is starting to get a bit stronger, so I hope my raspy voice is not too distracting this past week. It has been years since I've had any type of sinitis or cold, which hit me pretty hard this past week, and I'm just starting to get over it. I am on the backside of it now, so hopefully my voice will improve a little bit each day. But as we head out on our trail for today, I want to ask you this question. Do you affect or infect others? Words, words, words. In my opinion, when we talk about the connection between attitude and behavior, there are two words that come to my mind, affect and infect. My first reaction is to think affect as a positive verb and infect as a negative verb. But I guess they really can be both. So let's look at the definitions according to dictionary.com. Affect, a verb used with an object. First, to act on, produce an effect or change in. Second, to impress the mind or move the feelings of. And third, of pain, disease, etc. And then infect, which is a verb used with an object. First, to affect or contaminate a person, organ, or wound with disease-producing germ. Second, to taint or contaminate with something that affects quality, character, or condition unfavorably. Third, to corrupt or affect morally. And fourth, to imbue with some pernicious belief, opinion, etc. So that gives us a dictionary definition of them. But let's move on. I love this quote attributed to Eleanor Roosevelt, which states... Every one of us every day has a choice to make about the kind of person that we are and what we wish to become. You can decide to become a person who brings people together, or you can fall prey to those who wish to divide us. You can be someone who educates yourself, or you can believe that being negative is clever and being cynical is fashionable. You have a choice. And how true. Which one are you? What would your family, friends, and or work colleagues say about you? Now, if you've listened to many episodes of Wisdom Trek or read the Daily Journals, you've heard me say over and over, attitude is a choice. A split-second choice, 24-7, 365 days a year. We have the power to affect or infect our own lives, a situation, our relationships, and our workplaces in a positive or negative way every day. As we do begin winding down yet another year of ups and downs, triumphs and tragedies, Let's take a few moments to be thankful for all the good in our lives rather than focusing on the negative. By making a conscious choice to be a power surge rather than a power drain, we can open ourselves to a positive effect or influence on ourselves and others regardless of the conditions around us. We can even infect our world in a positive way. We can spread the positive attitude virus. Look for the good in others and trust for the right results. How freeing this thinking is. What an uplifting, renewing way to live. And so it is. Life is actually made up of our choices. We are the sum total of them. And if we hold to an attitude of love and thanksgiving for all the good things within our grasp, we may have all the ambitions people long for, which is considered success. What about you? Have you been infected with a disease of a negative attitude and mindset through those you associate with? Or because you have not filtered out the garbage that is entering into your mind? If so... Fortunately, I have a cure for you today. Gratitude is a vaccine, an antitoxin, an antiseptic. This is a most searching and true diagnosis. Gratitude can be a vaccine that can prevent the invasion of a disgruntled attitude. As antitoxins prevent the disastrous effect of certain poisons and diseases, Thanksgiving destroys the poison of fault-finding and grumbling. When trouble has smitten us, a spirit of Thanksgiving is a soothing antiseptic. Frederick Bushner said, The place God calls you to is the place where your deep gladness and the world's deep hunger meet. Make sure that you fill that place. What a wonderful reminder to take time to think about what God is doing for us. 
Too often we focus on the horrid things, the evil, the terrorist attacks, the hurricanes, the floods, the devastation, and the famine. But for now, let's prepare our minds for a season of thanksgiving. Take time every day to verbalize and write all that you are thankful for. Doing so will revitalize your soul. And I have a three-step process for this revitalization of your soul. First, begin with thanksgiving. Psalms 100 verse 4 tells us to give thanks to God. Enter His gates with thanksgiving. Go into His courts with praise. Give Him thanks and praise His name. As we see here to begin with thanksgiving, to thank Him for His patience and forgiveness. Thank Him for the privilege of coming into His presence. Thank Him for all He has done in and through your life during this last year. Secondly, list what God has done. Write it down. Take time to list what God has done for you. Be very specific. Think of every area of your life that you have been blessed this last year. And third, become still before the Lord. Psalm 46.10 Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. So here, let's consider who God is. Praise Him for His attributes. Rejoice in your fellowship with Him and that He delights in fellowship with you. Read passages of Scripture and pray them back to God and sing to the Lord regardless of your singing abilities. So as Thanksgiving approaches, take time to reflect on all the blessings in your life. Keep in mind the opportunities that you have to change the world through your attitude, your talents, and your gifts. The life lessons that we can learn each day from each other are valuable to everyone that we meet. So encourage your family and friends to join us each day and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. And between now and Thanksgiving Day, we will focus on how wise it is to be thankful in a series of short and inspiring stories. That will finish our podcast for today. Remember to listen to your daily dose of wisdom each day at wisdom-trek.com or you can subscribe at any of the social media platforms. And please share Wisdom Trek with your family and friends through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person as you meet with them each day and invite them to come along with us. If you would like to be added to our weekly email update for Wisdom Trek, just text the word WISDOM to 44222 on your phone and you'll receive a message asking for your email address. It's very quick and easy to do. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, I consider you my friend as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly or fully, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.